This little video will talk through the main stages in making C or copied DNA. It's not intended to be fully in depth, it is just an overview. So before we start talking about cDNA, it's useful to have a quick look at the central dogma of biology and this tells us about the flow of information within a cell. And within a cell you have DNA that is able to copy itself with the use of DNA polymerase, so that's replication. That DNA through transcription is used to produce messenger RNA by enzymes such as RNA polymerase and that messenger RNA is then read by ribosomes in a process called translation to produce proteins. Now cDNA sits in the, as a reverse step in this flow of information. What we're going to do is take messenger RNA and using reverse transcription convert it back to DNA. Now there's a number of good reasons you want to do that. It's particularly important as a first stage in cloning and it is a way of generating libraries information that we can use in later steps to identify and characterize proteins that we're interested in. So the cDNA library then consists of copied DNA or more often known as cDNA and it reflects all of the messenger RNA that is present in a cell or tissue at a given time. So it gives you a snapshot of all the proteins that are being produced by a given cell or a given tissue at a given time point. Now messenger RNA it's good to look at the sequence of this and this general structure of this because it's useful later on has a number of main parts. It's going to have a large coding sequence. This is a string of nucleotides that will code for a particular protein of interest. It has a start codon, normally ATG, and a stop codon. Flanking either side of this are five prime and three prime untranslated regions. These are regions that have sequences that ribosomes bind to and these untranslated regions down here are involved in terminating the transcription of the protein and regulating the messenger RNA. In addition, there is a 5' cap that is put on before this messenger RNA is released from the nucleus and a long, and this is critical, poly A tail. Now the poly A tail is used to give the messenger RNA stability and all messenger RNA contain this poly A tail. Now to purify and create our cDNA, we first must purify our messenger RNA. And there are a number of ways to do this. Um, you can use triazole extraction. So if you want to go and have a look at that, I'll put a link in the description. The method we're going to use here is affinity interaction with poly T primers bound to either magnetic beads or to some sort of solid substrate. So imagine you have a lysed cell and in that lysed cell you have ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA and messenger RNA. Only the messenger RNA has a poly A tail on it. We're going to use magnetic beads or dyna beads or solid phase media that has attached to that a poly T sequence of nucleotides. The poly A tail of the messenger RNA will interact with the poly T nucleotides that are bound to the solid substrate. Everything else will wash straight through the column, be separated away from the bead. We can then release our messenger RNA for the next step, for example, reverse transcription PCR. So we'll have our messenger RNA. We're then going to start creating our cDNA by annealing an oligo T primer to the poly A tail of the messenger RNA. So this primer is long stretches of T's that base pair with the A's and only this will occur with the messenger RNA. We're then going to use a rather funky enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase is a viral enzyme and the virus uses it to convert its RNA genome to DNA. So this enzyme has the property that it can take RNA and convert it back to DNA. So our primer will have annealed to the poly A tail, the reverse transcriptase will find that primer and it will fill in and copy through complementary base pairing and create a DNA strand that is complementary to the RNA strand. What we need to do now is remove the initial RNA that we started with. 
To do that, we're going to use RNAs H, which is specific for the RNA in a DNA-RNA hybrid that we've just created, and it's going to carry out a partial digest and chop up this RNA. So it's going to chop that up and leave little fragments of RNA, and we're going to use those little fragments as primers for our DNA polymerase. Now, DNA polymerase is an enzyme that's used in PCR reactions, and what that will do is take an initial primer that's bound to our strand of DNA and use base pairing and copy in the missing strand. So in this way, we end up now with double-stranded DNA. This is our C or copy DNA. It is a copy of the messenger RNA that we started with. Now, once we've done that, we're going to have millions of different copies of cDNA reflecting all of the mRNA that was present in that cell at that time. And we have two choices. We can either clone it into cloning vectors, or we can use specific PCR to amplify up a sequence of interest. To do the cloning, we're going to take a cloning vector, typically a circular plasmid. We are going to cleave that open using restriction enzymes. So restriction, specific restriction enzymes will open our plasmid vector up. They'll also cleave our cDNA. The two fragments will have complementary ends and they will be ligated, that is to stick them back together using an enzyme called DNA ligase. This will clone it into our vector. And remember, because we're creating a library, this will happen for every copy of cDNA that we've made. And so we're going to end up with a unique vector containing unique cDNA from representing every RMM every mRNA that was present in the cell at that time. The other option is to do um, PCR. If we're using specific primers, we can amplify up one strand of that cDNA that's present within our library and create a large number of different copies. This is the mechanism behind which uh, reverse transcriptase PCR and real-time PCR then works by amplifying up a specific sequence. So a cDNA library then is a representation of all the mRNA that is present inside a given cell or tissue at a given time. It is a copy of the mRNA back to double-stranded DNA and we use those libraries in a number of different applications either to isolate proteins of interest or to work out how much a particular gene is being expressed inside a cell.